Good afternoon and welcome to the FX Daily Roundup. And uh, we've seen the cable make some moves today. Uh, we've still been in a relatively quiet session, although we have spoos at all time highs, but they've been relatively quiet. We'll want to take a look here at the cable, which actually has been a pretty decent mover and uh, hard to believe that, you know, how much ground we've given up since the election night when we actually got above 135. We actually just went uh, a little bit earlier, sub 130, but uh, found some uh, buyers. I thought we might not only make it down to the pivot, which is 2980. You can see that. Uh, what I was saying, calling it was a return to the scene of the crime. But uh, let's see, the low right there was 2989, call it 2990. Um, and I thought we might make it to 2980 and might even flush a little bit below that. But we had some support come in right here around this. Uh, I mean, you would have to look at the two hour chart or shorter on the uh, this shorter chart in here. Actually looking here at the five minute. We did have some support come in. I guess it was around, oh, you know, before here. I'm trying to think here. I think it was 30, 20 or something like that. We saw a bounce, but we came down here and you can see we started dip not only below that level, uh, but then we uh, went sub here, went down to 29.90. There was a potential that we could have even broken lower and really goose the stops. I thought that would have been a great buying opportunity, but it would have left the market in a, with a lot of damage. Had we done that, uh, there was a potential uh, that we could have got down to 29.65. At least when you look at the futures, it was translating to potentially a move that could go to 29.65. And there was going to be a lot of demand. But boy, that was, that was going to be a, a world of pain had we gone uh, down there for those that were long because – uh, it would have been a perfect area in the sense that it would have stopped out a lot of people. Uh, those that had bought and said, okay, uh, well, maybe we're going to go below 130. I'll put my stops here, but we better not get past 2980 or worse yet right here. And um, so when I looked on the futures, it was translating potentially to a lot of demand at 2965. We kind of overshot that. And uh, that really would have caused a lot of uh, damage, I think, because if we'd gone sub and gone down to that level, then they'd be looking for rallies back up here above 130 to just go in and exit and get out of the positions they had, they had put on the way down. But we, we didn't quite make it to 2980. We're still holding up relatively well. If we take a look at this on a shorter time frame, not necessarily a five minute, we're going to move into a 30 minute. You can see here that we have a nice little uh, hammer bottom right here and the potential for this market to work higher. Immediate resistance is going to come in right there, which is going to be 3063. We actually on the rebound back here, it failed at 3065, which is a 38%. And we that's, you know, from there we started to go in and slide back. I never thought we'd go all the way down there. I actually clipped a little bit of a short there. And I thought, okay, we're just going to dip back a little bit, reassert ourselves or regroup and then push again, make another move higher. Well, that was all she wrote on this move back at 38%, ran out of gas at 30.65, and then we just rolled down and we just continued to roll you know, lower uh, at that point. But this is a period that's actually moving right now. Obviously, that probably doesn't sound, sound like much concern, the big move that we've had, but I'm saying – even now, when everything else is quiet, we're still bouncing around, which is within reason, considering the, the move we've had over the last week, uh, certainly within reason. Um, we're going to just stick to FX. There's nothing really happening. I mean, spoo's all-time highs, but what are we, just like five handles higher than what we've been trading at for, seems like, forever and a day, uh, really all, all week long. Uh, NASDAQ has been been continuing to move higher and it's gently now starting to drag up s ps but that's about it uh and um we talked about crude oil yesterday it is above 61 dollars. we talked about that concern is that you know we could push even higher as we broke out of that range i was telling people to be careful trying to quickly short this we may still hang around here as those who are short will widen their stops a little bit but i wouldn't be surprised if this thing continues to push higher um, gold is a bit higher here. We are pressing up here at 1483. We're not looking at the chart right now, but other than that, like I said, we haven't seen anything. Well, let's tell you what, we'll bounce over there real quick because I did want to make a note. Is look at the 10 year, and we are 
continue to creep up here, it's certainly impacting the dollar yen. Uh, the dollar yen is actually has slid back and actually right now is below the pivot, um, which is the uh, 927, we're actually at 921. So you're thinking, why the heck is the dollar yen still falling off when spoos are all time highs? Maybe they're not higher or a whole lot higher, but why would they be sliding back? Well, the reason is, is because the uh, interest rates and that, you know, we're starting to see these notes come off of the lows, obviously pushing rates a little bit lower, impacting the dollar yen, which has not even been, you know, uh, riding this train up along with the S&P. So henceforth, we're seeing that. That's also aiding and abetting this move here in gold. So gold really, if you look at it, look at this two-hour chart. Watch this. You see right there? And take a look at gold. Almost identical. Look at that. To the move that we've seen here in uh, the 10 year. You see that? So uh, if you're trading gold, I would look to find a little bit of resistance here as we get the notes up here to 2812. Uh, pretty close. So that would probably confluence around here with this gold around 1483, 1484. You may see a little bit of a resistance in here. As I mentioned about crude oil, be careful with crude. Uh, we may try and keep this market here. Uh, for the meantime, but I think it's probably going to ultimately resolve itself higher. Uh, let's go on and go back into FX. We did see the dollar get above 97.38 yesterday, but today we've turned around and given that back as the euro took a dip down here towards, you can see here at 11.10. We're actually looking on a 15-minute chart. And uh, we held them here and we've worked hard. We actually have some resistance. I was mentioning the room at 1128. Um, well, we did make it up to what? Mm, 1130, looks like 1131. We're trading at 1126. Still relatively quiet, but noted some resistance here at 1128. Um, Dollar CAD, still relatively quiet, although we did pick ourselves up off of these lows. Uh, but you did see a nice little on the 15 minute chart, uh, nice little. Uh, almost like you'd call it a shooting star if you look at things uh, relatively speaking. I mean, if you were to say, well, maybe that's a gravestone doji. Either way, I mean, the wick's not super long, but we've been trading in a very tight range. Either way, nonetheless, we've gone and paired back. Not a whole lot, but uh, we have paired back on that. Peso, which had found support at 1892-ish, uh, uh, and we dipped down to 1890. We had made a rally. Our resistance on the bias chart today was 1908. We've kept the same... Uh, support down here is I think it's 1892 or 90 that we've continued to maintain. So we saw a little bit of a bounce. Obviously, dollar yen having its struggles here. Uh, and that's why I was, uh, wanted to go to that chart, was which on the uh, the 10 year, because you can see this, we've slid back. I and mean, we had gotten above the pivot, we failed, got above the pivot, looked like we we're going to gain some ground and slid back. And we obviously look on a daily chart. So finally, we got some, uh, you know, a little bit of legs here and we held above the 11.54. We kind of danced on either side. Uh, some were thinking that we could rally much higher. And I mentioned yesterday that uh, if you are a dollar bear, we, we, we did, we we're talking about this yesterday in the chat room. We mentioned it here today. And I was saying that we had a nice um, support, not support, but resistance key level here, 10.07. And um, that uh, this happened to confluence with this last move here, uh, right there, you see right there, which it was uh, 970 to 920, the 161% would come in at 10.02. So one of the things we were talking about yesterday is, was that if you're a uh, dollar yen bear, well, then you have, you know, your risk level, which is going to be 10.07 on a daily close. If you're prone to be a dollar yen bear, well, then you know the key levels to go and look at, which are 977 and potentially 10.07. But if you want to play it more cautious and you could just wait, but you were looking at defined, what I believe was defined risk. Uh, we talked about this. Look at the spoos, all-time highs, and we're actually heading lower. Uh, and I've mentioned multiple times this. We should be well over 113. So this has the, uh, the potential to still move lower, especially if things turn around. Even though the spoos are at all-time highs today, um, the dollar yen is following the, the interest rates, U.S. interest rates, uh, as opposed to uh, – um, the spoos and really it's pretty incredible if you think that it's not like the interest rates have uh, you know been going higher and higher. I mean lower and lower they've been falling I mean not falling but they've been going higher and they're just now starting to turn around this morning and immediately Dalian latched onto that um, 
take a look. Aussie, after a little bit of a rally here in the employment report from yesterday, which uh, was frustrating because I thought the employment report was going to be an hour later uh, and didn't even realize it until I pop up in front of the screen saying, okay, here we go. And turns out the report had come out 55 minutes sooner. So it was a bit frustrating um, on that. But I caught a little bit here in the cable today. Now, I haven't done that much. Uh, lately, in, uh, at least with, with FX, uh, but since SPOOs have been so quiet, I mean, we're moving higher, but it's very quiet, quiet range. Uh, we are starting to, believe it or not, it looks like we're starting to wake up in FX, so that'd be incredible if we do go in and see that. We'll go in and take just a quick look here on the cross rates. And you can see here where the... Um, Sterling Aussie has gone in pair back. Boy, did we have one some kind of a run here. Uh, and we actually have seen some decent movement in these cross rates. Uh, so they're starting to finally wake up again. But uh, we had this nice move on Monday, which actually eclipsed Friday's high, which was surprising. And then we formed a gravestone there, Jim, from there. It's just been down, down, down. I thought that uh, the Aussie point would come in weaker, so I thought there was a potential chance for a rally up here, which could be faded, but the uh, Aussie report came in a bit stronger than most expected, so we continue the downdraft. But we are coming into some support close in here, and then taking a look here with the guppy. Obviously, it said starting pairs have been under some pressure. Uh, we do have a nice resistance level, not resistance, but support level coming in at 41.83. We're forming a bit of a uh, mini hammer right now, uh, but that's on the two-hour chart. We'll have to see how we uh, finish them out today. Uh, Euro Aussie, uh, still a little bit under pressure, obviously, because of the strength we had in the Aussie. And Euro Kiwi continues to be a sleeper. That's all that we have today. Like I said, it's been relatively quiet, but it does certainly look like uh, FX is starting to wake up a bit. And thanks for joining us here on the FX Daily Roundup. Uh, if you want to go on to consider a, um, a trial with uh, Forex Analytics, it's a dollar for 10 days. You get to go on and, and uh, look at all the different analysis would be uh, basic technical, macro, harmonics, Elliott Wave, as well as uh, the chat room um, and uh, the webinars. So uh, consider that, like I said, a 10-day trial for only a dollar. And thanks for joining us here on the FX Daily Roundup.